Hi everybody, so the hydrogen economy is one of the big deals of our modern age because it's so tempting. If you burn hydrogen, well, you get water, so we've got this green fuel. In fact, where we get most hydrogen from is from cracking petrol. You get an awful lot of hydrogen and carbon, actually carbon dioxide. That then is burned. But that's not the only way of getting hydrogen, and of course a lot of research is going into getting hydrogen from alternative sources. One of them is water. The other is ammonia, and then you can use urea. With water, when you split it apart, of course you get hydrogen and oxygen, and you burn it and you get water back. So, extremely interesting to do something like that. With ammonia, you're going to get nitrogen and hydrogen, and with urea, you're going to get nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. So, water and ammonia, and possibly urea, are great candidates that are looking for overtaking hydrocarbon cracking. Now, the problem is, of course, it's already in a bond, it's already in a molecule, and you've got to rip those molecules apart. And, of course, ripping those molecules apart means energy in. So you have to put energy in when you burn them to get the energy back out. And the unfortunate thing about splitting up water is it takes quite a lot of energy. It takes less energy to split ammonia and even less energy to split urea, which is why Everybody's super interested in those alternatives. However, water is the most popular without a doubt. In order to get that to happen, what we need to do is put a couple of bits of material, stainless steel, in there. And then if we put a current on those stainless steel, we'll get that hydrogen and oxygen evolution. But they're very far apart. If we put them closer together, we'll use less amps. We'll use less amps because the resistance in that is lower. Now, this isn't just water. This is water and sodium hydroxide. It's an alkali solution. Being an alkali solution means it's more conductive and the resistance drops. So it's very popular to do it that way. Unfortunately, it's quite corrosive on materials and about the only thing that's going to last any amount of time is going to be stainless steel. But that will work. Let's have a look at it working. Okay, so that's kind of cool and extraordinarily easy to do, so what are the issues? Because there are issues with doing that. It takes a tremendous amount of energy to do that and it will corrode those stainless steel electrodes being the greatest issues. So the thing to do is to try and reduce the amount of energy, increase the speed of reaction and prevent corrosion of those electrodes so you can put them into a cell and they'll last longer and of course that is what all the research is about and that is what everybody's doing when it comes to working on these hydrogen cells based on water. Now one way to increase the speed of reaction is to increase the surface area. If we can increase that surface area then we'll get a much faster reaction. Having a much faster reaction means we'll get a greater gas vo uh, volume generated and of course that is going to give us a shorter time when we can run an engine on it for example. Now we've been doing stuff with this, which is a carbon felt, it's 100% carbon felt I got for battery research, but it is actually used in um, air filters. It's usually used in commercial air filters and you can buy it on the roll, it's quite hard to find small pieces, but a roll of it's really easy to find. Now I bought that to use in batteries, we have used it in the Forever Wick, and of course it's carbon, activated carbon, so a massive surface area. The big question is, how well will this do? Because it does answer one of those issues, that is surface area. So what I've done here isn't particularly fancy. I've taken a square of that activated carbon felt and I've stapled it onto some stainless steel wire with some stainless steel staples and that should reduce that resistance incredibly because now we've got metal going to metal and the distance on the carbon is very much smaller. So let's set that up. Okay, that's an active field of research and of course shouldn't be particularly surprising because a greater surface area is going to increase the rate of reaction. Of course it doesn't do anything for the amount of energy you're using, it's just that the reaction is faster. Now a lot of work have gone into catalysts, adding catalysts on activated carbon to reduce that energy requirement and a paper came out in 2020 with a very surprising result and that is adding these things. 
An externally applied magnetic field can actually double the output of hydrogen and that's got to be very exciting. So if we stick a couple of magnets north and south on those, then we can increase our hydrogen production. So there it is with those two very strong magnets here and here. Let's turn it on. That is a crazy amount of production. So I was asked the question, would this activated carbon felt improve hydrogen production in a water electrolysis cell? And the answer is yes. It would do it in any electrolysis cell, water, ammonia, urea, because it's got a larger surface area, we get a dramatic increase in the rate of production. The astounding thing that I found for hydrogen production was the use of external magnetic field, which I thought was very exciting. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps with your own work. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.